What's your first response when someone wrongs you? Do you shout out whatever pops in your head? Hey, look where you're going! Or maybe you keep your mouth shut and just give them a glare that could wilt daisies. You might even spend your afternoon thinking up creative ways to get back at them. I could totally empty the ketchup bottle and put in hot sauce, and they'll totally burn their mouth when they eat a burger. <laughs> yeah. When you get hurt, it's really easy to hold on to the pain, sometimes for days or months or even years. You just want to see them pay for what they did. But it's like allowing a bad seed to take root. And if you don't dig out the hurt, it can turn into deeply rooted bitterness. Trouble is, holding on to pain doesn't hurt them. It hurts you. That's where forgiveness comes in. Forgiveness is deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. It is not saying that what that person did is okay, but it says that you're giving payback to God. Forgiveness is a decision and also a process. Sometimes you have to give the situation back to God over and over. But when you trust God for strength to forgive and root out bitterness, you make room for beautiful things to grow. Things like peace, joy, and compassion. And the very first step, ask God to wipe away the wrong things you've done. God will always forgive. Then you can pass that same forgiveness on to those around you. That's why forgiveness is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Let's go. I know I'm gonna make mistakes in this life I live, but you never leave me. You forgive. I won't always get it right. It's all right. Cause no matter what I do, I'm always loved by you.
Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about forgiveness. Well, we take a look at the story of someone who knew just where to go with her messy life. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about forgiveness, which is deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. Speaking of forgiveness. Yes? You know how we're all works in progress? Of course. And you remember that beaker full of delectable M&Ms that you left on the counter yesterday? Oh, right, thanks for reminding me. I totally want a snack right now. Yeah, about that. Wait, that's the beaker that the M&Ms were in? This is the beaker. Where are the M&Ms? You did not eat an entire beaker full of M&Ms! I was only gonna munch on a handful, but they kept calling to me. I cannot believe you ate all of my m and I feel terrible. Bet your stomach did too. True story. I'm really, really sorry. I'll get you some more. I forgive you. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna get you some more, I promise. Cool. But I know something we can do with it first. Something better than M&Ms? Yep. Let's make it. Step one. Take a candle and place it in the center of the dish. Step two, put a few drops of light food coloring in a container of water. Because around here, we love food coloring. Then pour the water in a shallow glass dish until it just covers the bottom. Step three. Light the candle. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Grown up alert, grown up alert. <laughs> yes, make sure you have a grown up present. Or you may accidentally do something that requires a lot of forgiveness. That was a little dramatic. Yeah. Step four, cover the candle with a glass beaker. A conveniently empty glass beaker. Then the final step is you're going to put a few drops of dark food coloring around the rim. What's with the water? It's all getting sucked up into the beaker. Pretty cool, huh? What just happened? Science! As the flame consumes oxygen, the pressure inside the beaker is decreased, while the pressure outside the glass stays constant. Since the outside pressure is greater than the inside pressure, the water gets pushed up into the beaker. Taking away the water in the dish. Oh, just like how forgiveness takes away all the bad things you've done. I see what you did there. I love a good visual. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in Luke, the third book in the New Testament. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. And while most people loved him, the religious leaders grumbled. That Jesus was changing the way they'd always done things, and they didn't like it, one bit. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Chloe. Hey Chloe. The religious leaders, some called Pharisees, were keeping a sharp eye on Jesus. They weren't completely sure about him yet. So one of them, a man named Simon, invited Jesus to have dinner at his house. But even though Simon gave Jesus the honor of inviting him for dinner, Simon left out something important. See, at this time, everyone wore sandals, no socks. And when they walked the city streets, they got whatever was on those streets all over their feet. Use your imagination. Ugh. So usually when a guest came to your house, servants would wash their feet right away. As a sign of honor, you might give them a kiss and anoint their head with oil. But Simon didn't do any of this for Jesus. And someone noticed. 
A woman from town had heard Jesus was going to be at Simon's home. She lived a difficult life and done many wrong things, but she knew that Jesus' love and mercy were greater than her sins. She desperately wanted to see Jesus, so she came to Simon's house and saw where Jesus sat at the table. Now, you've got to understand something about how people sat to eat at this time. Tables were low down, so you actually sat on the floor. In fact, you might even lie down on your side with your head over here by the table and your feet back over here behind you. The woman had bought an expensive container of perfume to pour on Jesus' feet as a sign of love and honor. She must have thought it was terrible that no one had offered to wash his feet and wanted to do it herself. But she didn't have water or a towel. So this woman actually used her own tears to wash Jesus' feet and wipe them with her hair. It seems strange to us, but it was an incredible sign of this woman's love and devotion. After washing Jesus' feet, the woman kissed them. Then she took the perfume she'd bought and poured it out over them. As the strong, sweet smell of perfume filled the room, Simon and the other guests watched the woman. They were shocked by what she was doing. Simon said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who was touching him. He would know what kind of woman she is. She is a sinner. Simon thought this inside his own head, but Jesus knew exactly what Simon was thinking. So he told a story to help Simon understand. Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher. Two people owed money to a certain lender. One owed him 500 silver coins. The other owed him 50 silver coins. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So the lender let them go without pain. Which of them will love him more? The room was so quiet, you could hear a pin drop. At last, Simon spoke. I suppose the one who owed him the most money. You are right. Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water to wash my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman has not stopped kissing my feet since I came in. You did not put any olive oil on my head, but she has poured this perfume on my feet. Wow, Simon got called out. Simon had invited Jesus out of curiosity, but he hadn't shown him any love or respect. This woman's many sins have been forgiven. She has shown that she understands this by her great acts of love. But whoever has been forgiven only a little, loves only a little. Your sins are forgiven. <gasps> um, excuse me. Who is this who even forgives sins? The other guests whispered and exclaimed in shock. But Jesus smiled at the woman with deep love in his eyes. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The room was filled with religious leaders who were quick to call the woman a sinner. But they didn't look at their own lives. They didn't see their pride and hard hearts needed forgiveness just as much as the things this woman had done. The end. I gotta be honest, all the feet washing and perfume stuff seems a little bit strange, but she was all in for Jesus. Exactly. She saw how much she needed Jesus. All the religious leaders missed it. They thought they had it all together. They didn't think they needed Jesus or his forgiveness. So what's our part in this story? Jesus made it clear. Everyone needs forgiveness. Not just the guy who robbed a bank or the school bully. All of us have done things wrong. We've all messed up. And those wrong things, big and small, have broken our relationship with God. They make us feel far away from God. We all need forgiveness. It's why God sent Jesus to be here on earth with us. Jesus showed us how to live. He's the only one who never sinned. And then Jesus laid down his life for us. When Jesus rose to life again, sin and death were defeated. When you choose to follow Jesus and ask God for forgiveness, God wipes away the wrong things that you've done. God looks at Jesus' perfect life instead of your sins and says that you don't have to pay for those sins anymore. That's the most amazing thing ever. So don't miss this. 
You've done wrong things. You need to be forgiven. But because of Jesus, God is ready and willing to forgive you and wipe away the wrong things you've done right this second. That's amazing. Enjoy. See you next time. Bye, Bye Chloe. Chloe. So here's the thing. Everyone needs forgiveness. Just like you forgave me for the M&Ms. Wow, thank you. Can I have a few? A few. Okay. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Oh, no, 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 no.